Hey everyone, Shadow Wraith back again, this time with a quick guide for doing Presage Master Solo Flawless or running Top Tree Night Stalker with Succession, Ikelos SMG for Warmind Cells and Lament for DPS. Here's the artifact mods, and then we're going to be running Shield Break Charge, Taking Charge, Protective Light, highly recommend, and Powerful Friends for increased mobility, and then Global Reach for the Warmind Cells. I should have been running Passive Guard here, but I completely forgot about it. So I was running different mods instead. And then again, highly, highly recommend running Protective Light. You'll see that save me uh, probably a few times during this run. So without further ado, let's jump in with the little cutscene. Like I mentioned in the last video, I really like this mission. I think Bungie did a great job putting together the content. And I like the fact that they didn't add the timer in the first one because it made it more accessible to more players, especially those who don't have fire teams to run it with. Um, but I actually really do like the fact that there's a timer in the master version because it adds another level of urgency and stress to the situation, which makes it even more fun of a challenge for me anyway. Um, with three people, I would say this is still a fairly simple mission to do as long as you're kitted out correctly and at level. But solo, it's a great challenge um, to take on. I would say probably harder than Whisper, probably about the same as uh, Zero Hour Heroic. But overall, I, I just really like the mission. Uh, apologies for taking like a week to get this out. I was trying to get my characters up to light level, so 1320. Uh, I haven't been playing quite as much this season and needed the extra week to get a couple more pinnacles to get myself up there. So if you're trying to run this, would highly recommend waiting until you're at least 1320. Uh, it'll be significantly more difficult if you're under light. But I mean, hey, if you're able to do it, let me know in the comments because I would love to see a video of that. Um, and then lastly, uh, a couple things to keep in mind. Um, I am running with Lament. If you're really going for the flawless and you're not having issues with time, Anarchy is probably a much safer option. I was just trying to run through it as fast as I could, and Lament is great for that. But it's high risk, high reward. Maybe faster, so you don't have to worry about time quite as much. But during the boss fight, uh, you're much more likely to get killed. So. Keep that in mind, run um, Anarchy if you prefer to go the safer route. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get into the actual run. Here I stay on the top platform and then jump over this stuff to flip the switch. And then I invis and just run back past all the rest of the Screebs or Popscorn. Each class has its own advantages here. Uh, Hunter can invis past a bunch of things, so it saves you a little bit of time, but is a little more fragile than some of the other classes. Uh, Warlock, I could run Devour or um, Controverse Holds with Top Tree Void for a ton of grenades. High DPS, better survivability, drop a Rift. Um, it just makes that part easier for like the, the boss fight. Uh, but it would take a little bit longer because I can't invis past some of these areas. Uh, and then Titan, I don't know, Titan might be the hardest, um, but it's got a lot of great survivability tools and uh, its jump makes the jumpy puzzles pretty simple. Um, so up to you. There I turn around, throw a grenade to kill the last Pops Corn um, so that when I go back, it'll be clear. And after running this a bunch of times, you just kind of get a feel for where the ads are and where they spawn and where they run to. So that one, uh, he would have been waiting right there when I came back. So the grenade killed him. Jump down, kill the fuse, jump back up. The path is exactly the same as the standard version of the mission. Try to get as much speed going down here as you can, and then jump at the very end, and it'll hopefully kind of catapult you into the room. And then whenever I flip the switch, uh, I generally look at these first ones to try to find the fuse quickly, because if it's like this one on the left, you have to hit that one right away, otherwise it gets covered by the doors or the trash compactor walls. And then Hunter, in my mind, is the easiest for this, because you can just double jump next to the scorn and they'll just kind of explode and not really damage you. Um, found the second fuse. I did not see the third. So now I have to jump backwards so I can still see through the grates. And fortunately, it's one of the middle ones, so it didn't get already covered. Drop down, turn around. And then this next area is where things start to get a little more interesting. So I'm running shield break charge, so I want to break this first void shield with my grenade so that I'll get charged with light. 
just so that I have an extra protective light in case I need it. And then I drop back here so that I can kill these snipers. These snipers, at least in my case, will two shot you, um, even with protective light and everything else on. So I drop back, kill a couple ads to get a warmind cell, pop the warmind cell, that kills most of these things. And then I wanna take out the last sniper. And it's pretty safe back here. Those two void shielded guys uh, generally stay up there. So all of the little, um, little lantern guys will charge you over here and you have a lot of time to shoot them. And then I go invis here so that I can close the distance and take out these void shield chieftains. This guy manages to shield himself right before I kill him, so I dodge to invis again. This is why I'm running 6th Coyote, so I have two get out of jail free cards with the invis dodge. Um, you could also run something like Worm Husk Crown maybe for the bump to health, but having two dodges in some of these areas is is almost essential for the way I'm running it anyway. All right, coming up on this next section, uh, I wanted to save my super because using the super against the giant lightning hand guys, whatever they're called, is uh, really useful because they don't slam you while they're tethered. So here I wait for the two snipers to come out, pop the one, the other one goes to the other side, pop him, and then I dodge to invis again, and then I want to clear out this top platform so that I have a safety zone in case I need it. And then next I drop down invis to kill the arc chieftain. And I'm keeping track of my charge with light here. I still have two. I haven't had to use um, protected light yet. So I'm in good shape. Take out the solar chieftain. And then I start getting blasted out right there. Protective light sheltered by the void um, helps give me some assurance that I'm not going to die. So I try to kill two of these guys to get an orb of light to reproc charge with light. And then now I have this little guy over here, so I tether. He does his first slam, then he gets tethered, so now he can't really do anything. So I use um, Lament to burn down some health. Then I recharge my sword ammo. You can also try using something like uh, Lucent Blade here. I was doing Lucent Blade, but I found that it was always using my charge with light, and I wouldn't have protective light as much as I needed it. So you finish off the first guy. Another round of chieftains will spawn, so I again take out the arc chieftain and the little guys next to him. Then I invis just to get up here safely, and again, want to take out the snipers sooner rather than later. All of these little lantern guys will jump up, kill them, get the warmind cell, pop the warmind cell to kill most of the other adds, including the snipers. Invis to close the distance on this uh, void shield guy, and then the pop scorn spawn, so I invis out of there really fast. Again, like you can see how useful having two dodges is for the invisibility. Um, so I drop down here now and just start chopping away at this guy. The nice thing is you can mess with these guys' attacks. So you walk up, you stagger them out of their attack, and they just walk away and you can deflect and it, it basically does nothing to you. One more round, heavy attack, and he's finishable. And there we go. That is the entire room cleared out. Not a big, not a big stressor. Jumping around here, uh, if you do this right, which I did not, you can jump onto here, then onto this little thing. He didn't grab that. If he had, then I could have just jumped straight over to the top of this thing and then up onto the ramp up above without having to use this lower platform, but missed that jump. So had to do it the slower way. Let's run through the corridor, drop down, and you're in what I would call kind of the second second part of the mission. So flip the switch, grab the buff, and then here's where you'll start to see time savings with hunters. So in here, this is dangerous, but again, uh, I like to live dangerously. So I, I flip the switch, then I have to hit the sniper shot and immediately jump to avoid getting blown up by uh, the popcorn. That is not <laughs> a safe way to do this. Um, but, you know, I, I kind of like the stress of like, can I make the shot? And then here they're standing kind of where I need this buff. So I just invis to, to get them to run away a little bit um, and then still almost end up getting killed. So you can see Sheltered by the Void popped up there. I don't know if the other explosion would have killed me, but hey, Sheltered by the Void for the win. Run through into this next area. This, again, saves a lot of time. You just invis here. 
jump up. Because I've got a second dodge, I can use a second one right here to drop back down to the little turret. Kill the turret. And then kill the fuse. And then I've got another dodge, so I can just invis over to little plants again. And then as I grab the buff, I get one more dodge to use here to drop down. So you don't even have to kill any of these guys. Uh, if you're using a different class, uh, you're probably going to have to kill at least the little guys and avoid the pop score. So with Hunter, you just drop down, kill this gate, kill this gate, grab the buff, crash into the gate, and then keep running. <laughs> Pretend that didn't happen, and then you make a left turn, and then this little popcorn you can just jump right over, and he just blows up, and then flip the switch. As you go through this, actually turn right here, grab the buff, and head back across the room. All right, again, another room where dodging saves you some time. You don't have to kill anything here. You dodge, run all the way through to flip the lever, and then kill the fuse. Dodge again to go get the buff. Again, like having two dodges here is hugely helpful. Grab the buff, use one more dodge to skip back through everything once more. And then here's a big time save uh, that is a little bit tough. You get this buff, and then you jump your way through. You have almost no time to spare. But if you go full speed, and then I dodge here to avoid the snipers, you can just make it through this with that first buff. That's possible on all characters. Um, but again, especially on a run like this, it's tough. Uh, because it's a lot of stress and you're jumping in like, all right, I got to make it work. All right. And then for the boss, this is actually really nice because one grenade and three light swings, four light swings into a heavy will hit the damage gate. Then I invis. This is why I'm running shield break charge for the boss fight, because there's so many shields here. It ensures that I'm always charged with light and always have protective light ready to go. Invis again, close the gap on these uh, solar chieftains because they will destroy you with their fully automatic shotguns that have way more range than any shotgun we have. All right, finish off these ads and that'll open up the computer terminals. And once you kill that one, then two ads will spawn on each side. This is actually really nice because you can get two kills to get an orb of light. So if you're not already charged with light, that will get you charged with light by using the taking charge mod. The war mine cell killed the two over here. And then going into the boiler room, something that I found out recently, you can actually deflect with a sword and you'll take less damage from the fire. So that's a kind of nice perk to keep in your mind. Uh, not as much useful here, but it's useful downstairs after you finish the damage phase. Um, if you're trying to get out, it keeps you from burning a lot. All right, now here's the most risky part. You have to block his first attack, and then I tether here, get a couple slashes in. Then I have to block again, and then jump out of here. And then you can see Sheltered by the Void just saved me again right there. Um, I would have definitely died to that uh, last melee attack. Um, so play this safe, or like more conservative, especially if you're using a sword. Don't try to do too much damage, especially if he's dropping fire on the ground because that'll get you killed really fast. And again, for shield break charge, this is huge because there are arc chieftains downstairs. So all you have to do is pop a shield and boom, you're charged with light again. You've got protective light back. Drop down. I'm going to pop another arc shield just to get a second charge with light. And then I'm at half health, so I can tank a hit. So switch the sword, deflect, and then drop some damage in. And then get out of here ASAP. Switch entrances once more. Drop down this side. Now a couple more sniper shots should get him to damage gate. Pop another shield just to get their attention. Get a few shots in and there we go. We're at damage gate. Be careful jumping out of there. It's very easy to bunk your head. And then here I just wait for the solar chieftain to spawn. Take him out on this side. Dodge for the invis to close the gap. And then... These snipers, again, when the snipers spawn, uh, prioritize them because if they can two-shot you while you're sorting 
the uh, chieftains, um, you will you'll be very disappointed if your flawless run ends that way. So here, I did what I am not recommending you do, and I didn't kill the other sniper. And look at that, I almost got killed. Um, because one sniper hit me, and then I was getting hit by the other stuff. So if that second sniper had hit me there, I would have died, and flawless run would have been over. So make sure you take out at least one of the snipers, both if you can. And then here, I'm just trying to get another orb of light so that I can be charged with light again. And then get my Warmind cell to spawn and try to take out the snipers. There's my Warmind cell. So pop that as the next round of adds are spawning. That kills the little Screebs, so I don't have to worry about them. And activate the terminals again. Uh, so this is actually a case where you'll, you would probably have a much easier time with a warlock um, because when you drop down to hit the boss you could just drop a rift right there and then just keep sorting the boss while standing in your rift and that would take you through pretty much most of a damage gate um, so that would that would save time here if you were running warlock uh, you just wouldn't be able to invis through the rest of the level so you'd have to kill more ads so it's a trade-off right here drop a tether in the center up another couple of shields just to get rid of these guys so they can't damage me while I'm trying to hit the boss. He comes up, deflect his attack, and then keep damaging him. And then drop back a little bit. Next round of adds will spawn. Jump up because I don't want to get surrounded. And then there will be uh, generally three of these little red bars on each side, which is again great if you need another orb to get charged with light. Um, or you need a little bit more ammo or something, you can just hop back up, kill a couple of these guys, and that'll that'll get you what you need. Drop down on the other side, unload some sniper shots. The sniper does some pretty significant damage from longer range, so it's nice. Jump back up because everything else is spawning now. So again, take out the three adds on each side. And then use again a different, uh, different entrance. Pop these two guys. Pop the shield, and then deflect the first attack. And then dump enough damage in. And then I almost die here again. Sheltered by the void saves me there. He does not climb up, and I'm like, oh shoot, I'm dead. I jump down, grab an orb, sheltered by the void again and invis to safety that was very fortunate um i i don't know i didn't really deserve to live there but fortunately i'll take it so now he like one more sniper shot should get him to damage gate and i'm a little worried that he's just going to teleport right in front of me and then miss a couple shots he does his little long range attack and there we go damage gate jump back up and then now um is Probably the most challenging damage phase because a bunch more stuff will spawn up here during the actual damage gate itself. So again, kill the first Solar Chieftain, take some cover, make sure you are charged with light. In this case, I'm not, so I want that orb out there. So Invis, after I kill a couple more of these guys to keep from getting swarmed. I've still got seven minutes on the clock, so I'm okay. Use the Warmind Cell. Again, that kills the Screebs. Grab the orbs, I'm now charged with light times two, so I've got protective light running. Kill one more chieftain. Don't take any chances. <laughs> Invis to close the gap on the last one. And finish him off. All right, now we are to final damage gate. And midway through this damage gate, all the chieftains will respawn up here. So do the same thing with the uh, computer terminals. It's nice to sometimes leave some orbs up here too, uh, because then, worst case scenario, if you lose your protective light, you can jump back up, pick up an orb without having to worry about trying to drop down and kill another shield. Take out the final add, block with the sword, get the last terminal, and then obviously don't take any crazy risks here. Um, just finish off the boss. So here he warps right in front of me. Fortunately, I have my sword out so I can deflect. And then this is not a good scenario, so I block and just jump out again. Shut up by the void. And then all of the chieftains are up here. 
So keep that in mind, be very careful. It's very easy to jump up here and then just get immediately chain shotgunned um, by that guy. So take out the ads again, make your way through. I've got charged with light again from that orb. Dodge, close the gap, kill the chieftain, and repeat for the last one. All right, now I have my tether back up. I'm making sure all the ads are down. Drop down, tether the center, and then try to figure out where the boss is. Fluff a few sniper shots on him. He's doing his long range attack, so I step to the side. And then now I want to try to take out some of the ads just to make it a little safer um, to finish off the boss. So I kill one of the chieftains, deflect. Fortunately, he missed me with that melee, um, but I was deflecting anyway. And then you can also dodge down here. Once there's fewer ads, it's pretty safe just kind of staying down here with him. You can dodge to invis, and then he loses track of you and just kind of stands over there. So finish off the rest of the ads, grab your sword, deflect his attacks. Here, I did not go in because he set fire to the ground. I'm waiting for him to do that attack, because now I can dump some damage into him and then just sit. He set the ground on fire again, so I'm waiting. Take a seat. <laughs> deflect that last attack, and there we go. So when running with the sword, if you play this not like Destiny is kind of intended to be played, like like some other game where you're much more cognizant of blocking and then attacking, it actually works pretty well because um, you can block his attack and then damage him and then step back, block his attack and damage him. So it works pretty well. Um, that's why I was running Lament versus Anarchy. It's still definitely doable, but it is higher risk versus just using Anarchy stickying him and then just jumping up to the top and waiting for the damage to take out. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, this was a great challenge, really enjoyed it. Took some time. It's definitely not easy, uh, but it's very rewarding once you finish it. So highly recommend it. One last very important note, do not leave the mission until it actually says mission ended. There's like a chunk of time here where you're just kind of standing around. So give it time, make sure it says mission end before you return to orbit. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, would really appreciate the like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and catch y'all next time.